everyone, it's Christina and I am going to do a process video today. I'm going to make a journal from start to finish. I'm going to show you my supplies that I've gathered uh, and embellishments that's going to go inside the journal. I'm going to bring out my sewing machine and I think that's it. Oh, and I did a little bit of crafty shopping in the last few months, so I want to show a few of those things that I got too. Um, all right, so we're gonna head over to my craft table and get started. The first thing I did was look for paper for my cover, and I like my cover to be thick paper, so I'm not sure what this one is, the thickness of it, but I'm sure it is at least 60 to 80 pound paper because it's quite thick and I'm going to use this one it's from this collection here and everything I'm using is in my stash I didn't have to go out and buy anything this one here this collection is by 49 and market heirloom heirloom botanicals and this is what I'm going to use for my cover it's very pretty and then I think what I'm going to do is also from the collection is cut this out and use it as decoration on the front of the cover and then also in that pack there are these embellishments so I can cut them out and use them in the journal all right so that's the first then I printed this out now I like to buy digital images and digital paper on snap click supply. I usually will purchase on a Wednesday because they have one buck Wednesday so you can buy kits for a dollar but yes you do have to print them out and I know it takes up ink but I usually try and print things that aren't solid colors like things that are black and brown and reds. Um, I don't print them up. I like to print things that are light in color or black and white. This is gorgeous isn't it? So I might use that and I did double-sided printing. I'm probably going to use this. It just reminds me so much of spring and these beautiful little daffodils. And then there's this one, the little black hearts. And this one I love with the butterflies and then these little printed flowers. And then there's this one. So there's that. Then I picked up a whole bunch of these at the thrift store. That'll be a good insert. I just have to cut it to size. And then this was in my stash. It's a double-sided paper by, 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 by Kaiser Craft. Um, really pretty. And this one, and this one. And they're double-sided. I like using double-sided paper. Then I'm probably gonna use one sheet of this, of the sheet music. That's always nice some watercolor paper. This is just blank watercolor paper. And then I got this book a long time ago at the thrift store and it is a dictionary. And so I'm sure I'll use a page of that. This is one-sided ledger paper, ledger paper. Got this book at the thrift store, so that'll be cool to use that as a page or two. This is ledger paper that is double-sided, so I'm going to use that. Then this is uh, glossy. Yeah, this is glossy paper. That is so cool to use in a journal. Love this so much. I got this for Christmas for my girlfriend. Onion skin paper, so I'm going to use a sheet of that. Or you could use tracing paper if you don't have onion skin. And then I have this big pad of ledger paper, and I'm sure I'll use that. So though that's going to be the inside of my journal. Then this is the hemp cord. This is what I'm going to use to bind the pages and the cover together. Then I have gathered some trim. I'm going to use that. And if you don't have hemp cord, you can use other things. Like I went through my stash. I have this cord. And as long as um, it's really, like give it a good tug. And if it doesn't snap or break, then it's perfect. So I have this gold cord I could use that and as and also um, as long as the thread here I have to get my needle so as long as I can get the thread through the eye of the needle then we're good I also have no I can't use well I could use this but this is really thick I don't like to use that 
But this thread here, I don't know, I must have got this at the thrift store maybe, but it's really, really strong. That will work. And then this floss, this would work too because it's very strong. And then that's about it. I gathered some trim. I like to either use my glue gun or my sewing machine to trim some of the edge of the pages. So let me grab another journal. I'm making this one, but I haven't finished. So right here, I sewed on some trim on the edge and I love to do that. So I've got some of that ready. Then I've got this rosette trim that um, I won't, either I can sew it on or, or hot glue it on. And I don't know, I pulled that out. I'm sure I'll do something with that. Now I'm going to grab my paper cutter and start cutting my paper to size, which will be 10 inches by 5 inches. All right, so now I'm going to cut this at 10 inches, but I want this edge, so I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to trim it at 10. Well, actually, I'm going to trim it a little bit more than 10, uh, about 10 and an eighth or even a little bit more. I'm going to cut the bottom then off at eight inches, a little bit more than eight inches, about an eighth, eight and an eighth. All right, so there's my cover. I will fold it and crease it a little bit later. So I usually go to the back of the book to take the pages out. I just find it a little bit easier for me. So I'm going to grab this one here. Then I'm going to grab one page from this sheet music. And then one page from this encyclopedia or dictionary. Some pages are pretty scary. There's this, ooh, I don't know, big looking eel. And I don't want that in the book. But there's a pretty bird there. And on the other side, it's not bad. Now I'm going to cut everything to size. I'm sure you don't want to see me cut all these pages 10 by 8 inches, um, so I'll come back. And for my inside pages, I don't cut them, I don't cut them all at 10. Usually what I do is I take my page and I fold it in half and then I cut it at the 5 inch mark and then I turn it and sometimes I want this in my, if you don't want this stuff in there, then you would cut it here. If you want to keep that in your journal, then leave it in there. So I think this time round I will. Um, yeah, so most of them I just fold them in half. So I've got two pages here of this gloss paper. And fold it in half. And then I will cut it at around the five inch mark, sometimes less than five inches. And then I'll go through all the pages and do that. It's just, I like to, I like to fold them in half because it goes a little bit faster that way. The last time I was at the thrift store, I picked this piece of fabric up and I cut it a little bit smaller and then I put it in my printer and I scanned it and then I printed it up. Um, so now I have it on a piece of paper. I'm going to use this in my journal. Now this is not, uh, uh, was not 10 inches by 8 inches. It's smaller. It's nice to put smaller pieces in your journal. And then on Etsy I purchased a newspaper print and that's what's on the other side. And then I'm not throwing all my scraps away because I can use them for some embellishments later on. I took some pages out because I had too many. So now I've got 14 altogether. And that is one, two, three, four. That's four sides. So 14 times four is 56. So there are 56 sides to work on, to, to write in, to journal, to add pictures and all that. This is the cover and I inked all the edges with chipped sapphire and it's uh, very pretty. So now I'm going to cut out this image right here. Ooh, la 
voila, that's going to be pretty. So now I'm going to take the pages and then just randomly put them one inside the other and then put them in the cover and then arrange them the way I want them to be to look at finally at the final stages before I bind it. And when I stick it in here like that, if any of them are overhanging at the edge of the cover, I might trim them. So, so far so good. Sometimes I like to, because this is blue, the next page, if there's any blue in it, um, it looks nice together. But there's no blue in there, but there is blue in here. So that looks nice together. And this is that onion skin paper right here. And I usually like the next page to be one of a colorful page. So I think I'm going to put that in front of this red or pinky one. All right. So this is the order that I'm going to leave it at. And now I'm going to put some trim in here. And this pink one, I'm going to glue on with my hot glue gun on this page right here. Next, I'm going to take this rosette trim and I'm going to sew it on this page. And when you pull the thread out, pull extra thread out, and then you have all this long trail of thread, and then you can save it, which I do in a little pile right here, along with scraps, like I'm going to cut this off right here, and I'll put it there, and then they make, I'll show later in the video when I make um, some embellish embellishments. Now what I want to do on this this page right here is I have some extra trim left over from this paper and I thought what I would do is kind of first of all I want to take this image and sew it on this envelope so I'm going to sew down here and sew down the left side and I'm going to sew close to the edges so at least um, a tag can still get in the envelope. So I have to sew really close to both edges. And I want to sew this <laughs> onto this strip right here and also sew the strip onto this page. Just this page right here. And then I want it to be left open here, and that way you can tuck something inside. So I'm going to go to my sewing machine. I'm going to do that, and I'll come right back. Now I'm just going to trim the edges off. And then put this back in. Put this page back in the book. Yeah, so that will be cool. So you can put still, oh good, it fits. So yeah, you can put tags in here um, and you can still insert some extra things in here and in here. Now this paper is so nice and thick. I'm probably going to make some tags out, out of it, but I also made a corner pocket and I also stitched the pocket on and then the stitching so shows through onto the cover and you'll still see some of that stitching because I want to glue this image on the front and I've already inked a doily up because I think I'm going to put the doily in the background there 
Um, but yeah, it's still, it's so nice to see the stitching come through. I'm going to work on binding it together now. So I am just making sure it's even on both sides here. And then I use the bone folder just to push everything down. And then I'm going to clamp it. And I'm going to cut my hemp cord here. So it's probably, I think I'll cut about um, 20, it's usually, I don't know, 20, 21, 22, 23 inches. I've got my paper piercer, my needle, which I will thread right now. Okay. All right, so I have that ready. Now I'm going to, I just use this, you can see how many times I've used this little um, pocket dictionary. That's how I do it. I'm going to open it up, grab my needle, oh no, sorry, grab my paper piercer, and then I always eyeball it about halfway, and then I push it through. You can see actually it comes right through the paper back here. And I push it sort of down and up and down and up because I want a fairly good sized hole so I can get that needle through. And then between this hole right here and the end of the book, I don't know, about three quarters of the way, and I make another hole. And then I do the same thing on this side. And I also what I like to do is just push it through again and make sure there I can see that needle coming out there. Or not the needle, but you know, the end of the piercer. So now that I've done that, I'm going to grab my needle and my hemp thread. I'm going to go and put this through the center, the center hole. And I'll leave about that much tail, I guess. And then I'm going to come up. Bring it through this hole here. And then go inside the book and pull it through. And you have to tug pretty hard. There we go. Sometimes I have to put on like, uh, what are they called? Like vinyl gloves or latex gloves, just so I can have a good grip on this needle. All right, then I'm going to bring this down and bring it through the bottom hole. And then I'm going to take this part of the thread and the inside tail and I'm going to tighten it. Then I'm going to bring the needle through the center hole. And sometimes, here, sometimes when you bring the needle through, it doesn't go, here I'm going to show you because it usually, this usually happens to me. So I'm going to push it through the hole 
and it's like, where's the needle? And it's gone um, in between these pages. So at this point, I take the needle out and I push the piercer through again. And I do it again, and there it comes. And a little bit of gentle tugging. There we go. I take I take these off. And now I pull pretty tight, because this here, I want this part of the cord um, very taut, very tight, and these outside ones. So I'm going to... Um, take my hemp cord. I want to make sure one tail is on one side and the other tail is on the other. Now I'm going to pull tight and it's nice and then I'm just going to tie a couple of knots. And trim these. And then what I do is um, I kind of crease it just with my hands. You could use a bone folder if you want. But I open it up and then I just go through the pages and then press them down. And now I'm going to work on the cover. And that is pretty much it. That's how a journal for me comes together. I have to admit, I love doing the cover. Um, it's just so much fun. Um, the video is getting really long. I wanted to do a couple of more pages. I also wanted to show you a few things that I purchased at scrapbook.com, but that's going to be another video. Um, I purchased a new die, so I'm going to do another video of a process video showing a layout. 
and then I can incorporate some of the new goodies that I bought as well. All right, everyone, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.